just a heartbreaking day for myself and for any Maryland fan. Uh, the, the incredible performance of Fat Russell. Fats Russell was just superb. I had a chance to tell him that on the post-game Zoom. And just the way they lost this game. And there was a lot, there was a lot of crying guys. I got Wayne Viner in with me and I got Todd Carton. Uh, there was a lot of crying about the no call on the foul at the end. Uh, Manny said that it, all his people said they thought it was a foul. And, you know, which, which, which no call the, on, on Scott or on Russell on the drive before on Scott, Scott on the uh, drive to the bucket. It was very clear that I've watched it seven times that Travion Williams had his hands in the air and he backed up as, as, and covered him as he was driving. He did hold position. He moved and affected the shot, blocked the shot a little bit, and fouled him bodily without question. And But you know what? Refs always choke on the whistle in that situation when you have a number four team at home playing a number uh, 154 team. It's just the way it goes. You don't get that call when you're bad. But Wayne, I'm going to start off with you. Talk about Fats Russell in this game today. 37 minutes, 24 points, nine boards, six assists, three steals. The guy did everything today. The mid-range game was working for him. He got to the basket most of the time when he had to. He was the quickest player on the court, and that gave a lot of challenges to Purdue. This, this was the good Fats Russell. He actually managed to play very fast and within himself. And in talking to you throughout the day, he did a lot of things in changing the floor balance that made the whole Maryland system go. He was effective defensively. He was efficient offensively. If you could get this Fats Russell every day, you're going to win some games no matter what league you're in. I'm Wayne Viner from Viner Four Gates. We make your company work. I'm Martha Smith with Viner Four Gates. Two-factor authentication is a must-have in today's world. Security training for your company is a must. The crooks are getting smarter. We have to give you the edge to fight back. So well, if you got this Fats I'm Russell, sorry, every day, Fats. if you got Fats Russell every day like this, he'll be at the next level. All right, because he was that good. Nine rebounds. Uh, it was. You know what he Six reminded rebounds. me? You know, do what you he, find that kind of absurd? That Fats Russell had nine rebounds. I think the when the last time I looked at the box score, Hakeem Hart had six, and nobody else on Maryland had more than four. I mean, Fats yeah. Russell's barely bigger than I am. I'm five foot four. He's barely bigger than I am, and he led the team in rebounding by a wide margin. Yeah, well, um, they tell me you were a great. Re- they tell me you were a great rebounder, Todd. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. I, 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 I would. I could box guys out. <laughs> All right, let, let's talk about this. Todd, I'll let you talk about it. Thursday night, arguably, was maybe the worst performance I've ever seen a Maryland team have. And that's a big statement. But I know that there were a couple games against Duke where they lost by 30 or 40 points. But that wasn't Duke we were playing. That was Iowa. And the mo- it was the most lackluster effort I ever saw, especially at a home game. And yet today, they were incredible. The fire that they brought to the game, especially with Ayala out, was uh, untold. Todd, your comments on that? Well, you know, I mean, honestly, Bruce, I watch it. I agree with you that that they they played just, you know, orders of magnitude better today than they did in terms of their effort and in terms of the, maybe to a degree in terms of execution than they did against Iowa. And maybe that's a reflection somehow of what they're drawing from Eric Ayala. I don't know. You know, I mean, he was, he wasn't on the court at all today and they played their hearts out. I think they stepped up. Everybody stepped up. It happens a lot when your star is out. And everybody stepped up and played better. I don't think Eric's – I know what you're, what you're kind of insinuating, but I don't believe that. I don't think – first of all, they had no knowledge he wasn't going to play until game time. Manny said it was a game time decision. 
that Eric came to him and said, Coach, my wrist is really hurting. I don't know, you know, something to that extent. And, uh, and Manny, you know, erred on the side of caution, which he has to as a head coach. But, well, uh, and, and, and that's fine. And to me, that, that argues even more sort of against them sort of being in that position of stepping up and everybody knowing they have to step up because they had no time to, to sort of mentally prepare. You know, the, you got a guy that I like Ayala who, who wants the ball, who keeps the ball, who uh, has played a lot of individual sort of ball to, de- uh, to date in the season. And maybe that changed their, their mindset a little bit. I don't know. I'm, I, I'm not that involved with the team, obviously. I don't know the dynamics, but you look at it and, and it just raises some questions in my mind. That's all. Well, well one thing it raises in my mind is they play defense like, like maniacs today. And that was not there. And that's not Eric Ayala. It's not one guy. And ex- go ahead. Oh, oh, I was going to say, yeah, except for once they got the 12 point lead and they stopped defending the three because uh, Purdue made about 28 threes in a row in that stretch. Hey, they and, don't have Jordan Bohannon. Come on. Yeah. yeah. And, and then, and it drove me crazy, honestly, late in the game uh, on about five straight possessions, Purdue fed the ball into Trevion Williams in the low post. And except for one possession where Fats dropped down and actually created a steal, they left Good. Julian Reese on a one-on-one on Trevion Williams. Julian Reese is not going to be able to guard Trevion Williams one-on-one, period. He's not physically strong enough yet. You know, I mean, and, and what that was all about defensively, I don't know. Hi, when you go into the number when you go into the number four team in the country's home, and even though you're up by 12, you're just not going to blow that team out. They're going to make a run. 90 times out of 100, a team like that's going to make a run. And I love the fact that the team made its run, took the lead, and Maryland had the wherewithal to stay in the game mentally, to do the things you had to do. The layup by Fat Russell was absolutely incredible. And they did enough. To have the ball at the end of the game with a chance to win, and that's in crazy in a crazy gift, right? Well, it happened. Inco- it happened. Yeah, you know. Well, and, they, and the referees gifted them two free throws on Fats Russell. Now, I don't know what Fats Russell said. You know, uh, late in the first half, Merrill right. has the ball, trying to get a shot off. Uh, Purdue, very fouling. intelligent, fouls them because they have fouls to give. And Fat says something to the ref, and they tee him up. I think Bruce has issue I, with that. Bruce, I think I think what happened was was actually that uh, Fats thought, uh, and I think it was Hakeem Hart who had the ball, thought he was getting fouled, and the official was holding his whistle, so so that uh, and he held it for two or three seconds, which made Maryland's issue tougher. And and those two free throws then, and he said something, and the official teed him up. We don't know what he said. Yeah, I you know what uh, I don't know what happened, but if if I if I was on the sideline coaching, I'll be honest with you, Wayne, I would have gotten thrown out, okay? Because I would have not I would not have accepted that. And at the end of the game, I would have had to be physically restrained, like most coaches might have been, where they didn't call that foul. Now Danny said he didn't see it, and he wasn't sure, but uh, Dante Scott said I unquestionably was fouled. They just didn't call it. On, now, on, honestly, Bruce, they had to be prepared for that foul not being called because I, I, I thought on the possession before Maryland's possession before that, Fats went, and I guess I think that's the amazing drive you're talking about that Fats made to the basket. Yes, he, he was fouled. He clearly got fouled by Travion Williams. He got him with the body. There was no call. And then Purdue comes down and Ivy gets the three-point play. In the next yeah. possession, you know, but that was so that should have told Maryland they're not going to call that foul there. I mean, because that was a clear body foul. There was no question. Travion Williams put him with the body and knocked him into the eighth row of the stands. Wayne went Friday night, I think, or Thursday night. We go to Nebraska. Friday night, late <laughs> night at Nebraska. What's seven gonna 17. Maybe there's seven and 18 by now. What, what, what's going to happen Friday night? Maryland. I don't think Maryland's had one good game at Nebraska in, in the multiple years we've been in this conference. I, I think Maryland does find a way to win 
They then get Penn State back at Xfinity Center on Monday night at 7. Maybe get a win or two out of this. I don't think they're going to go 3 and forever, which would be 3 and 17. Uh, you get five or six wins out of this still. Uh, you could end up with a winning streak. They're not – I don't think that this is a bad – individual set of players they just have not played like a team if they play like they did today you could have won a few more games i'm not well, saying they're going to be world beaters but you could be you know like two three more wins and we've discussed ways that could have happened yeah that's you Russell's know, pretty good in his own i mean you Russell. heard the, the guys from cbs love hakeem hart probably maybe a little more than we do um Julian Reese had some moments and they're getting to be more moments. He has to grow up a bit. Yeah. He got locked on a somewhat strong offensive player and he held his own. It was a bad design. They should have doubled the ball as Todd was going to say, make the guy get rid of the ball, make somebody else take the shot. I'm yeah. not saying it would have stopped them. Just don't let the guy shoot the ball from six feet away. Uh, that should be a primary off defensive design. They're not doing that. Scott has his moments. I Alice had some great three point shooting moments. Go back to the Rutgers game. He looked really good, but that was weeks ago. Individually, they're not that bad. They're not superstars. These are not five star recruits that got away. So, can they win a handful of games this conference? Sure, guys, they can win. They just you guys remember playing. growing up? I don't know if you guys played rec ball or not, but I certainly did before I went to high school. Hell, I still do, Bruce. And there was always one guy out there who was like two heads taller than everybody else. And the parents used to say, it's not fair. You know what I mean? It's not fair. And uh, this guy, Jaden, what's his name? Zach Edie. It. Yeah. It's not fair with that guy. I mean, <laughs> that guy doesn't even have to jump to get a rebound. And Maryland did a good job against him. He was, uh, well, he was five for nine. You know what he did? He kind of had like a Caduce Wahab game. You know what I mean? In other words, he didn't really dominate, but he got 11 rebounds and Caduce got four. But blocks. Yeah, no, yeah. I know he had a block. No, he did a lot used. more Caduce. Yeah. And, and I what's, got, up I, Caduce's, I, I, what's up with Caduce's hands? I mean, you know, can he hold on to the ball? I, he does I not it. catch the ball well. I, as I they watch. said as some others, when you throw him a pass, you got to make sure if he doesn't catch it, hits him right in the chest because his chest might have better hands than his hands. Um, he has some trouble catching the ball and, and the wizardry of a Fats Russ or Ayala cutting the basket and trying to flip the ball off to Caduce Wahab doesn't really work that well. Cause it Caduce worked one time ball. today. It worked nicely today. You know, how about, well, how about Caduce taking the tray? You like that? Well, let's go back to the play that did work. They told him they were going to do that when he gets his momentum going to the basket and he knows the ball's coming. He's Okay. It's the fact that Maryland freewheels a lot, attacks the basket on the fly, and tries to make an artistic pass to a guy who can't catch well, and that rarely works. Uh, in fact, it doesn't work. You might as well just throw the ball out of bounds and save yourself the trouble. Well, then they got to tell him more often. I mean, that's a that's a simple problem, a relatively simple problem to fix. And yeah, you could run down the the middle uh, and go, "Q, I'm throwing you the ball," and like let him know the ball's coming. Because otherwise, like I said, he must have just thrown out of bounds. He doesn't catch it. There's little so, improvisation there. Yeah. And I, just so you guys know, I played in the Miley Cyrus League, more like wrecking ball okay. than wreck ball. Uh, yeah, but you were about the size of Fats Russell, and I bet you were that quick. Well, you he know, has the hair. Look, he's, he still has yeah, the hair. Hardly. I know Fats Russell reminds me of what Russell Westbrook, the way he plays as far as that hectic pace every minute he's in the game. And uh, he shoots like Westbrook. He hits about the same percentage, you know. But I love Fats Russell's game. I don't know if there's a spot for him in the NBA, but there's a spot for him somewhere, all right? Somewhere there is, Wayne. Mark my word. Oh, before we hate, before we go, because time's running out, Eric Wiggins. What, Todd? Aaron. Aaron. Aaron, Aaron, Aaron Wiggins. Wiggins. Yeah. I still don't know if that's 6.4 a year or not. I've seen yeah. three different conflicts on it. Yeah. I could, I could, that's when you asked me, Bruce, I said, I could, I couldn't settle it. Uh, whether, you know, I mean, the 6.4 makes sense as a total contract to me because, you know, it puts him a little above the, the sort of the league minimum. 
uh, which is around 1.2 for a guy with a full year of experience. Right. Uh, so it puts so for four years that puts Whatever, you at even if it's that, he's guaranteed five million. The fourth year is not guaranteed. So with five million dollars, Eric Aaron Wiggins slept pretty good last night after yeah. he went over three from the field in nine minutes. Okay, and it, cer- and it certainly makes it look, makes his decision look like a wise one. Yes, it does, guys. Before we gotta we go. go. Break, I got one. I got thought there. A shout out to Mason down in Jacksonville, where the Jacksonville Dolphins go to Duke on the lacrosse field, and they beat Duke at Duke in lacrosse. Absolutely incredible. The number two. Wait a minute. The number two team in the country, Duke, who surpassed Maryland last week. Yeah. All right. That Lost team. To, to, to Mason's Jacksonville Dolphins. Good for Jacksonville. Good, good for, for good for Flipper and and Bruce. I'm just going to give a shout out and remind your listeners uh, that Wednesday is Giving Day at UMBC, and I've got my big challenge: ten thousand uh, dollars, dollar for dollar. If people want to go to GivingDay.UMBC.edu and look for Carton Family Scholarship, and I challenge you with a hundred dollars. All right, I already did that. And you Guys, can win Todd's money. Wow! All right, I'll take right. him up on it. Spend. Thank you. Spend it. Take care, guys. Great having you all. We'll be back 